Now, I am a firm believer in a person having a teacher when learning to play the piano. I've had six over the years. Four of them were concert pianists, and all of them have had some influence and were very helpful to me. However, I also recognize that for one reason or another, it's just not feasible to have a live teacher for everyone. Now, there are a number of channels on YouTube already to teach you how to read music, what the names of the keys are, various technical problems you run into. I don't really want to duplicate any of that. You can go watch those videos for that. But when you don't have a live teacher, there is a significant problem that has to be dealt with. And that is, a teacher will point out when you get a wrong note or a wrong rhythm or the pedaling is off or whatever. But when you don't have a teacher, how do you know when you make those mistakes? That's what this channel is about. There is a danger that I want to point out early on. And that is, you can easily fall into the trap of just copying me or whoever is playing. So when you want to learn a piece, you'll just listen to it and then you'll learn to more or less play it by ear. If you want to read music, you have to be very careful not to just copy. So I'm going to explain to you how I think you can best use these videos. Let's say you have a methods book and you want to go through it or you've already started it, whatever, and you're on a particular page in that methods book, what do you do? Well, first off, you need to do your best to try and learn to play the music yourself without any help. Try and understand what's on the written page. Try and understand what all those symbols mean. Try and do it correctly. Eventually, you want to get to the point where you sit down with a new piece of music, you can play it with confidence and know you're playing it correctly according to the music. So do that first. Try and get it right. Then once you think you've got the music down pretty well, come to this channel, go to my playlist page. Every method book I upload will be in its own playlist. So find the playlist for the book you have, then find the page or the piece of music that you're working on, because I upload every piece of music in the method book, and I do it in a separate video. And I'll identify it by page number and usually title of the piece. Find the video that covers it, watch the things to remember section to see if I point out other things in addition to what the book is talking about. Then once you get to the play with me section, I recommend you play it with me one hand at a time. And that's so you can listen very carefully to see if you're playing the same note I'm playing and if you're playing it at the same time I'm playing. And if there's pedal involved, I have one camera at my feet for pedaling. You can watch the pedal to see if you're pedaling when I pedal. You'll have to go through the play with me section several times because you do it one hand at a time until you're comfortable and then try both hands together. Now on some videos, at the end of the video, I'll put in a demo section where I will demo all or part of the piece. Sometimes you may question, how fast should it go? Well, a lot of times you can find the piece somewhere else on YouTube. You can hear what it goes. I mean, it might not be the arrangement that you're playing, but it'll be the piece. You can find out how fast it should go that way. But otherwise, I'll try and give you an idea how fast I think it should go. Now, in the description of the videos, I will put the start times of each of the sections. Things to remember will always be first, it'll be start at zero. Zero minus zero seconds. Play with me will be whatever it is, and then if there's a demo section, I'll list that too. That way you can go directly to the section that you're interested in. Now, I do recommend, as you do this, that you use a tablet because you can put a tablet right on the music rack next to your music so you can watch the video and your music at the same time to right there together. If you've done your research and you've gone through the videos and you've gone through my video and there's still something that you just don't understand about the piece you're working on or the music or something, then please, by all means, ask me and I'll do my best to explain it to you. Occasionally, I might upload other videos based on people's questions. Now, as far as the piano you're using, it doesn't really matter. Hopefully, it's reasonably in tune. Whether it's an acoustic piano, an electronic piano, electronic keyboard, or partial keyboard, it, 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 it doesn't matter. 
any of those would work. I do recommend that you have a sustaining pedal. If you're using an electronic keyboard, they don't always come with sustaining pedals. So you can check on yours to see if there's a port for a pedal, an input port for a pedal. And if there is, you can, you can uh, go buy a sustaining pedal or you can order it online. Good luck.